I'm Darnell Cox with Living Lifestyle, and today I have a very special treat. Next to me right here is almost 500 years of knowledge, and we are gonna learn a lot from this very wise panel of women. So I'm gonna start with my mother-in-law, Gail Prince, who was the inspiration behind all of this, because I am fascinated by how you are living young at the age of 85. So mom, go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, hi, my name is Gail Prince and I'm 85 years old, and I was born in 1933, middle of a bad, bad time in the country. I uh, went to USC, Ye Trojans, and I got a uh, degree in uh, education, and I graduated and taught in LA City Schools for a little while, then I stopped, and I had five children of my own, and what a blessing. What a blessing. And I married one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mom. <laughs> and then I went back and got a master's in deaf education. And I taught the deaf for many, many years and retired when I was 65. Wow. And it just seems like yesterday. That's 20 years ago. Well, yeah, so 20 years ago you retired. Yes. So we're gonna find out how you fill your day after 20 years of being retired. But let's move on to you, Carol. I'm Carol Alcoy, and I'm 86, and I was born in 1932, middle of a bad, bad time in this country. I also remember when the Second World War began. I graduated high school in Los Angeles. Um, I went to Mills College, graduated from there, got married, raised a family of three daughters. And when my youngest daughter was 12 years old and my oldest was 17, I stopped being a stay-at-home mother and went to work teaching. I taught downtown Los Angeles. I taught bilingually. I taught for 20 years, retired many years ago. I've been a stay-at-home housewife ever since, except that we traveled a lot. I'm Joy Brooke. I'm 85, born in 1933. Well, I went to high school here. I went to college for a short time, got married early. Back back then, how old is early? Because times have changed 19, a little bit. Wow, 19, that is early. So it was too early. Yeah. Time went on, and uh, I have three children. And my, my main worry, aside from being a stay-at-home mom, was a volunteer. I was always involved in organizations. And what were some of those organizations? My Senior Gravis, City of Hope, Stop Cancer, and the Los Angeles Jewish Home for wow. the Aging. Are you still involved in those? The Los Angeles Jewish Home, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm Donna. Donna Elman Garber. I was born in 1925, before that depression, but I remember it. I was born in Chicago as an only child, spent a year with a knee problem and it kept me out of school in first grade. And so I went back to school having skipped first grade. I graduated high school in 1942. Met my husband-to-be his senior year of high school. Okay. We both started the University of Illinois and he wanted to be a doctor. And I decided that if we were ever gonna get married, one of us was gonna to have to earn a living. So I left college after two years and took a medical shorthand course and worked for an orthopedic surgeon because that's what he decided he wanted to be. Okay. And we were married when I was a month before I was 21. And uh, he went into practice on our eighth wedding anniversary. And so you, you helped put him through school? I did indeed. It was during the Korean War and during the draft time. It was. An interesting time to grow up. Mm -hmm. My first husband was an orthopedist. The process of our marriage, I had two wonderful daughters and just delivered the first. <laughs> and after Harv and I were divorced and he became widowed, uh, he called and asked me if I wanted to go out. And we married. We were married for nine wonderful years. 
but he did deliver my first daughter. Her birth certificate says, <laughs> Father <Wow>. Harvard <laughs> Elman, <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. Jess Garber. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that Donna is 93 years old. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead, Dorothy. I'm Dorothy Gartsman, and I'm 87. <laughs> I was born in 1930. I was born in New York. I stayed there till I was eight years old. We moved to California, went to junior high here, went to high school, graduated in 48. <laughs> I met my husband at a very early age, and also, 19. You got married, got married had children, and we, we had a wonderful life together. We traveled all over because of his business. He sold to NATO countries, so we visited all these countries from Norway all the way down to Israel and made a lot of friends and met a lot of people. That brings us up to date. Okay. Yeah. When was the first time that anybody ever referred to you as elderly or a senior citizen? And how did that hit you? Because I remember the first time somebody called me ma'am. And I was like, I, are you talking? I didn't, I'm like, I'm not a ma'am. I would say that's nice, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that hit you when somebody first referred Shocking. to you as, I'm sure. I was at a restaurant with my husband and went a fast place from in the desert. And we got our change. I said to him, one of us didn't get dinner. And they gave me a senior citizen dinner. Uh -huh. I was like, who was that brat that way? <laughs> yeah. Interesting thing happened to me yesterday. We unfortunately were at a funeral and saw someone there. And I was asking how old his father was. And he said, he's 90. I said, we oh, couldn't be that old. <laughs> and it suddenly occurred to me, he's younger than I am. <laughs> I say the number and people look and say, oh, that's a, you're really 93. But I don't think of 93 as being old. There was a time I was waiting in line at a restaurant with two other women and some man, uh, some rap star, whatever, he, he came over and he said, you remind me of the Golden Girls. <laughs> well, tell me <laughs> when you want to know when someone first calls you, calls you ma'am. So when he right. said that, I was shocked because to me the Golden Girls were my mother and her friends yes. <laughs> sitting sure. by her house. But they called us the Golden Girls. <laughs> I would tell myself to be more outgoing. I was shy and retiring and didn't put myself out there and wish now I had because uh, I keep up with what goes on at Mills College and what goes on at Mills College is phenomenal. And they had some of that going on then, even then. And I didn't, you, you didn't, take, didn't advantage take advantage of a lot of stuff that I could have taken advantage of, yes. Right, does yeah. anybody else have that? No, I was very happy in getting married and having children and traveling. So um, I don't really have any regrets that, uh, no. I think anyone at 20 should do what they want to do. And, enjoy life. Right. Worry about it afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have the confidence myself. And I don't think most people do. And we don't right. realize that until we're older. Until you're older. Mm -hmm. I agree. So you wish you could have had the confidence that you have now that, when you were 20. Right. Yeah. But that confidence comes from the experiences right. that we right. had. But I think most people sure. are in the same I place. I think all of us were married mm -hmm. young. I was 19. No, it wasn't just being married young, I just was, in general. I was 21. Having the self-confidence. But mm -hmm. it's, a, it's I, true. I, well, that's part of my not putting myself out there because I didn't have the confidence. Mm -hmm. If I'd known then what I know now, I would have made the effort. Right. And, just dive into once, things a little right. bit And once quicker. doing that, you gain self-confidence. Okay, does anybody else have anything else you want to add to that? I had a lot of confidence as a young bride. I knew exactly where I was going and I knew how I was going to get there. And for, I remained, Harv and I remained married. We had two children. We were married for 35 years. And then I didn't know where I was going. 
because I had a husband who at that point felt he was married too young and saw a whole world out there. Oh. And I found after 35 years of marriage that I was single. And I was the mayor of the city of Beverly Hills, single. You were the mayor of the city of Beverly Hills? Single, with a husband leaving her. So it was quite a learning experience. <laughs> it took a great deal of courage mm -hmm. to go to that first formal all by yourself because I had to be present. And I learned a great deal about living. I'm sure. But with no regrets about the years that had gone before. Right. It's even more difficult if it's not commonplace and even more difficult that you were doing it while you were the mayor of Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. That's, wow. That's a lot. Yeah, because you're an open book that way. Oh, yeah. absolutely. My whole life has been an open book. Mm -hmm. There's very little I can tell you here today that the people who are listening to this haven't heard already. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I couldn't wait till I was 65 because I was getting tired of paying those insurance bills. <laughs> <laughs> It made a big difference right. in husband. The first time that um, I thought about getting older was when we went to the movies and I got in as a senior citizen. Yeah. yeah. That, that was fine. I mean, it was half price and that yeah, was fine. It was, it was a lot cheaper. Didn't worry about that. But I think that the, the thing about getting older is something that you're not afraid of, but you wish for. Because, you know, people who are who are don't get there. They don't get to be the same right. guy young. Right. I feel sorry for them. They they've they've left out a lot and and so getting older is an is is something you say thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're healthy mm -hmm. and you have a family around right. you. Right. So getting old is a privilege. Yeah. Probably the toughest thing for me has been hearing. Or lack of it. Is what? Hearing. Oh. oh. Is what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's the story of my life. But is that's what? not a guilty pleasure. It is very common at a certain age to just get a hearing aid. Hearing mm -hmm. aids have become much more acceptable and less visible. Sure. Which is all fine. I'd wear them if they were like this, if yeah. I could hear everything I missed. Right. I go to plays and I miss, and I love going to theater, and I do yeah. it frequently. I miss more of the dialogue than I'm willing to admit. Even with a hearing aid in. Even with hearing yeah, aids. Me too. And I have a system at home with my television. Uh, what about the headphones? Uh, headphones are fine. Is it Sessinger or one of them? It's, it's oh, no, reasonably good. good, but they're heavy to put on your head. But I have captioned television. Uh, Mike, Mike wanted it because his hearing was so bad. And when he passed away, everyone said, well, you can get rid of the caption. I said, oh, yeah, I'll get to that. However, I find that it's wonderful to have because if you do miss something, you're glancing at it being said right there in the caption. Yeah, on the except television. they don't always caption what's being said. Well, it's, no, but it's better than blank. Yes. Yeah. The one thing I did give up when Jess died in fact, I was driving freeways. I because while we were married, he always drove when we went out. We, and if we were going far enough, he was we were on a freeway and he drove. And after he died, I hadn't driven freeways in ten years. And I decided that it was time to take the freeway. canyons. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fine. I'll drive anywhere as long as I know where I'm going. And, but I do stay off the freeways. I don't trust my reaction time. Yeah. And I would have nothing to prove. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a reasonably good driver, as my two friends will attest. But if we're going any place where I haven't been, where I'm unfamiliar with the area, I pass to my younger friends. Yeah, sure. Uh, five or six years ago, probably six by now, when my husband already had Alzheimer's, and had given up driving of his own volition. He didn't, nobody had to tell him not to drive. He decided. Uh, he went to take his driver's license because he said, even though I'm not driving, I want to be able to if I want, if I have to. Right. And so he went. He Just having it. the freedom if you had to, if you had to get behind so a wheel. Yeah. 
And the, the, the problem he had taking his driver's test, they had just put in computers and he had no idea how to You had know. a choice though when they said to me, do you want computers or paper? Yeah. Well, they didn't say that to him. Oh, uh, oh. And so he just, he had to figure out how to yeah. use a computer, which... That would be difficult for yeah. someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Which he, because he Oh, technology always... is something that is, that is I hate it. so difficult. <laughs> I would <laughs> like to know five years from now what things will be like. It's, I don't want that to know would, five years from now. That's something to look forward to. I mean, it's just yes. interesting. Five yeah. years from now, what what the, what it will look like? Mm -hmm. Because if you rewind the clock five years ago, yeah. because five years ago there was no Instagram or Twitter, or right? Whatever there is, right? Was. And it was bad enough then. As as I'm going to hire a, a, instead of a person to come and train me with my classes. I'll hire a child to come and help me with the, with the technology. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No question. Yeah. yeah. Anytime my phone, I can't work anything on my phone, I just hand it to one of my kids. Sure. They just fix it and hand it back. What about anybody else? I used to travel galore. It's just it's been in the last right? couple of years. But I don't talk about it much. I'm very arthritic and I have, I have a set of physical problems sure. that I don't spend much time dwelling. Right. But if I'm away from home and I'm away from the comforts of home and my ability to deal with them quiet, quietly and quickly, it can be very difficult. Right. And I think it's a chore for somebody else to do it with you. So I'm happy when the girls go and come back and with the pictures and yeah. tell me all about it because I've been there and they've just gone back to where I've been. In fact, we right. were there together years ago. And it just it's an, and it's a willingness to accept this inability to go without resenting. Yes. Very interesting. And I think that's, that's important. Who, who in the group still has a husband that's that's living? Nobody. No. And were was everybody's husband a little bit older than them or mm -hmm. did anybody yeah. Anybody marry a young one? <laughs> my, my first husband you, was Donna. only a year older. My second husband was old, nine years older than I was. Okay. My husband was nine years, old, ten years, nine years older than me. Well, my husband was, he just died this year, and he was um, 90. And um, I think that that's a huge adjustment for a person, mm -hmm. is to go through that uh, just not not the mournful part of it but just the going through it going out to dinner with a couple right. at, in our right. age yes at it's our age difficult. it's it's they all they're all very nice about it and they're all good friends but it's still something you need to adjust to do you find yourself having to have only girlfriends yes you, know, you get more girlfriends and, and fewer couple friends but at this, age, at this age i find i have very few Couple friends, they're mostly women Single. friends. Well, because women, They've all, women yeah. live longer. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. we genetically and live we, seven years longer than that's right. a man. But so we, we're out there. Yeah. We're having a good time, and we know it. Yeah, my husband was it. fifteen years older than me, mm -hmm. and well, he lived till he was ninety-nine. So how long have you now we, been? We were married sixty-five years. Wow. Well, so, um, and he died three years ago. We were married 63 years ago, and we died a year and a half ago. So there's a wow. big difference. That must be a very difficult uh, adjustment, just even being at home, because you're used to having somebody there all, all the time. So then I, I wonder if that, do you think that that has made you get out of the house a little bit more and seek friendships outside? I've felt that way before. Well, okay. we always have the same friends mm -hmm. all yeah. the time. Yeah. I, but also, if you're taking care of a husband who's ill, that's a different, a different. Right, right. Uh, yes, yes. Because my husband had Alzheimer's, it was we our, our couple friends drifted away because they couldn't. Yeah, yeah. they can't, they can't, can't, with it. can't deal with that. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. Yeah, it's a very huge adjustment to because my husband was not ill makes a big difference. And mm -hmm. so we were doing everything together. And so now it's just a year and and it's very odd to make that adjustment. And I think when you talk to people our age, you find that that's, that that's typical. You right, know. right. And well, so I was very independent even when I was married. So when Harry passed away, I still had 
a lot of activities that I was doing with him, without him uh, alone. So I didn't have that loss, that feeling of being alone. Well, that must be pretty difficult to adjust to. And it's different when you're taking care of a person yes, for so many totally. years. Yes. So it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. Because we were already taking care of our personal affairs at home. Yeah. We didn't have an adjustment. There was no shock yeah. someone dying. Right. Well, there was though. Because I was I was my husband's caregiver for a few years and I had to hire caregivers when it became too much for me. But I was still his caregiver because we never had 24 hour care. Yeah, and so your had, life revolved around taking right. care of. And yes, it's true, true I was taking care of the bills, although very reluctantly. One day my husband said, it's time for you to take over paying the bills and doing the this and doing the that. And I said, I'm not doing that. And he said, yes, you are. And I said, no, I'm not. And when the bills went overdue for two months, you I it. guess I'd better do it. You better do it. <laughs> I was angry, but I had yeah. to do it. And little by little, as he, with Alzheimer's, you decline slowly, sometimes not so slowly, but uh, when, when he died, I lost my job. I didn't know what to do with myself in the mornings. I didn't know what to do with myself in the evenings. Uh, when the caregiver was there, I could go out, and I did. I was out almost every day. I was always busy. But either the caregiver was there or he was napping. And he, mm -hmm. could, like, he could nap easily for four hours, so I didn't have to worry about it. Uh, I, lost, I lost my job. Mm -hmm. It was a big, big I adjustment. I felt very much lost. So would you say that I got used to it. Would you say that's probably one of the major negative things about growing older is the, the well, losing the, one of losing the major your negative things about growing older if you're caring for somebody right. if you're not caring for somebody then you don't and even if you're younger I, I don't yeah. think that it's not an age thing well even mom wasn't caring really for for Mike you guys just were together you guys were just oh, together and, oh. and so re having to redefine he went yourself. to the hospital Friday and died Sunday yeah and well for that shocking yeah. I had a different experience I'm saying your experience no that was totally different when but I didn't have an issue, I felt really that now I could go out and do what I want and not feel any ties at home. Yeah. I didn't want to go out and do anything because I, my job had been taken away from me. Right. But I had joined, um, I guess, a year and a half before, maybe a year before, one year before he died, I had joined an Alzheimer's support group. That's I good. learned a lot about mm -hmm. Alzheimer's and its decline. and. I made friends there. So right away somebody said, mm -hmm. would you like to go to a meditation class with me? Meditation? Well, okay, what do I have to lose? And so I do meditate now and I have lunch with friends from that group and I still go to the group occasionally because I still gain insight about my husband's disease mm -hmm. that I didn't have six months ago even though he's been dead for yeah. I joined a support group several years before my husband it died. Made a it made a and big it difference. Made, it made a very good, yes. I acknowledged the fact he had Alzheimer's. Right. I was able to right. stop covering up for him. Right. I acknowledged it. But Joy, how long was it that you you were taking care of him? Good 10 years. Are you, well, you're talking about a chunk of your life. Right. So that's why at this point, I'm glad I feel young enough that I can go and do and enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why I went to Africa last year. Good for you. Yeah, so, yeah. That's a that great was, trip. That was we, a, we went a couple years ago with all the kids and my husband and it was that's a trip you don't want to miss. It's something I always wanted to do. How do your how did your kids respond to you being at home by yourself once your spouse passed away? None of my children live in Los Angeles. Okay. They all live away. And two of my granddaughters wanted to take turns coming into town and staying with me. And I said, you can't do this. You know, okay, stay with me for the first week and go home, but you, you, you have your life to live. You can't do that. Uh, so reluctantly, they all went home. But somehow, either daughters or granddaughters managed to come in once a month, once every five weeks and stay a few days. Uh, 
and then they saw that I was out during the day, so they, they, yeah, <laughs> you they couldn't, fit, you that couldn't fit them in the schedule. I, yeah, you want? I'm going to lunch with a friend. You want to come? <laughs> oh well, okay. <laughs> so, that does happen. Yeah, that well, does happen. Yeah, but my kids were very, very good. They stepped up long before my husband died. Okay. Well, my husband also had Alzheimer's, but my children were very supportive while he was sick and after he passed yeah. away. Yeah. And are your children part. local? They're all local for you. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's, That's a big part of it. Yeah. It's very nice that they're it, all it local. Is, it, it is helpful if they're local. Yeah. Not a, but one of the advantages of not having them local is you really learn to do stuff by yourself that you have to do. Mm -hmm. And when they come, they stay a week mm -hmm. or several days. So that, that part's nice. My kids adjusted um, to their father, which was my first marriage. He died maybe like six, eight months before my second husband. And my kids were very, very involved with the second mm -hmm. husband and they really yeah. felt sad. And they're all out of town except my son. <laughs> and he's the master of the, of the circus ring, really. <laughs> he has four sisters that he has to let everybody know what's happening and what I'm doing and how I'm yeah. doing it. There's a chain of communication. Oh, they, 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 they talk once a week. Tell our viewers about the, the app that Jonathan put you on oh, so God. that you don't have to check <laughs> in with us. Oh. <laughs> but it is, but it's, but it is, a, it's a great tool. You might not like it. I don't know, but let's it's find out. It's a great tool. Any place that I am, he can look on his phone and it tells where I am. <laughs> they do that with five-year-olds too. <laughs> but for me, um, he would pick up the phone and say, so, what did you get at Pavilions? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, you're right, I just got home. And to me, he'll say, my mom is on the go again. Here she goes. I'm not, I don't know what class she That's has. That's funny but, because you know. I take a lot of classes and I do a lot of things like that. And so I don't have to check with this thing and say where I am because he knows yeah. where I am, but he doesn't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, at Pavilions, you can't be doing too much besides shopping. <laughs> right. This is an app on your phone? Yes. That he can trace you? Yes. Why wouldn't one that? <laughs> <laughs> That's because you have such bad habits. <laughs> <laughs> what are you so. trying to hide, Dorothy? Maybe so. <laughs> Okay, so now it brings us to a different topic because a lot of what I do on my website has to do with looking younger than your age. And I'm looking at all of you and nobody would guess that the age range was 85 to 93. It just seems impossible. So well, I wouldn't guess that you were all 50 either. Well, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors here. <laughs> and, and that is what I do. Like I, I do, I try to stay on the cutting edge of all of that stuff. But speaking of cutting edge, um, is there anything that you would say that you would like to admit to um, having any sort of cosmetic surgery over the years, even if it was 20 years ago? Have you done anything to improve or enhance the way that you look? And what do you feel about people that, that do? Because it's more in an upward trend now more than ever. All the lasers and things are just becoming a lot more, more popular. I think it's great. I think you should do it. If something bothers you, you should do it. Yeah. I don't have my bust redone. <laughs> I had this reduced. <laughs> I do too. Huh? I do too. Yeah. yeah I have well, that takes a lot of weight off your back, which is probably... Oh, that was the best. The best. No, Facelift was, was pretty good too. And I made a mistake. I had breast cancer. And the surgeon who took care of him, he took care of me, said, do you want this? It was a lumpectomy. He said, do you want the second breast reduced at the same time? And that was a mistake. I said, no, I don't want any extra surgery. It's bad enough I have to have one surgery. I just want to have it, get over it, yeah. and be through with it. Yeah. But I didn't have the breast reduction on the other side, and today I regret it. If I have any regrets about any of my surgical care or general generalized care, it was that. But you didn't do it when you could have, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that does help a lot with the with the strain on your back it and everything. Developed, I've developed a partial scoliosis. It's not necessarily apparent, but it is in my just physical care and physical sure. function. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a mistake. 
Yeah. And so I just wanted to be clear. So Dorothy, you had your breasts reduced, and Joy, you did as well. And did you both have a, a facelift? Mm -hmm. And and how old? We really have a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> and how old were you when you had that done? I, th I was 57 when I had my face done. Yeah. And I think my breast reduction may have been 15 years ago. Okay. And were you having back problems? I couldn't. I, my blouses and everything was down. Like yeah. Growth. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. well, I was about 60 when I had my face done. And just the one time. But do you feel like you were happy with it? And I was thrilled. Oh, yes. With it. Oh, and yes. I, yeah. And Absolutely. I for anything or two. And now it's like even Botox or any of the other things. At this age, the skin doesn't have the elasticity yeah. right. to do it. Right. So it is what it is yeah. at this point. Yeah. It is what it is. Looks pretty damn good. <laughs> my mother had had a full facelift after her after my father died, and so I come from a situation where she just uh, this is what you do, and so uh, I've never had. I had an automobile accident, and and it, I had my nose had to be fixed because of the automobile accident, but my. Last surgery, I must say, was my tonsils when I was 10. <laughs> and that, thank God, you know, that's what I've done. But yeah. I can understand having your breast reduction, you know, because they don't make bras. <laughs> <laughs> it's known. It was a great surgery. Uh, you can cut this. It's known as one hung low. <laughs> I've never had anything done. I, my regret is that I didn't stand up straighter because my posture is terrible. Mm -hmm. But outside of that. Yeah. When I was critical of having surgery, it was, first of all, surgery was a lot different when I was having surgery. And it, it had carried with it certain risks. Mm -hmm. And to me, the risk of undergoing the night for something for beauty yeah. instead of for health didn't equate. Right. Having had two surgeries previously. Yeah, and that might make a difference too, whether or not you've had surgery previously due to health reasons. Yes. But to to, to have the to opt to go under under the it knife nothing, again is it had nothing to do with critic criticism of, of improving yourself. Right. And right. it's it's funny that that's the one thing that you regret that you didn't do was have the rest reduced. Well, I was under the knife anyway. Under the knife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was asleep and he yeah. was there. <laughs> So what do you think attributes to you being this vibrant at 93 years old? Well, let's start with good luck. Okay. I was going to say, <laughs> was gonna say it's good luck. Sure. Let's start with good luck. Beyond that, I've always been interested in the world around me. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of traveling, been to foreign countries, been to Algeria, and, to, and care missions, things like that, right. that were made you realize what a fortunate place we are in here, yeah. at least we've been yeah. in. Uh, then I've exercised. I, I have a trainer who comes for an hour Fantastic. three times a week. And as much as I like to find an excuse like this morning that I <laughs> wanted to get my hair done instead of see the trainer, that, that was okay, but then she'll come tomorrow instead. Right. Right. So that, you You're know. not going to get away with it. <laughs> but I really think that the exercise has been extremely valuable. Okay. And beyond that, being aware and being part of the world. Dorothy, what do you think keeps you as what young you? as you are? Okay. I have wonderful friends. We're very active. We do things together. We'll go to movies, plays, dinner, play cards, and we're, there's always something happening. Something is someone's planning this or planning that, and that keeps you going. It keeps you active, and I think that's very, very important. And how many times a week do you think that you're out and about doing something? <laughs> Almost all seven. the time. <laughs> seven days a week. Mostly. I know all. mom's out yeah. seven days a week. We're sure. always trying to do something. A little party or a dinner or play cards. Sure. Or, I mean it's it's lots of fun. And so do you surround yourself with a friend group that's about your age that is just as active? Well, there's some that are in their seventies. Right. Yeah. 
right. in their 70s. <laughs> the youngins. <laughs> I have a few friends that are younger. Yeah, yeah they're really younger. I have younger friends. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about um, some of the activities that you do. I've heard some people are playing bridge, but I know that mom, let's start with you, mom, because you are amazing to me, the fact that you go to as many classes that you do and belong to as many clubs. So tell um, our viewers what your, what your life consists of now, because it's almost busier than mine. So I take uh, exercise classes and they're wonderful. I don't have a person who comes and does it. I go out to, to do it because that gives me people to do it with. Mm -hmm. And I take a lot of classes. I take a lot of current event classes. And I take classes about, about uh, everything that's going on in the world. And, and that's the one you take at UCLA? The one at UCLA is fabulous. I love that class. That's uh, beyond the headlines. And they have speakers who come over. and. And the people in the audience then ask questions, and it's so typical of what we're talking about because sometimes the questions from the audience are more interesting than the speakers. Right. Because the audience is all a bunch of old people. And so, <laughs> so I take classes of, of everything. Something turns up and I say, oh, I'd like to take that class that I go and I take it. And, uh, and it's, it's very rewarding, it's very rewarding. Fascinating, and I know we host the opera club oh, here. Right. So there's an opera club, and there, right. and you're and usually the club. youngest. I'm in a book club, and I, now I'm in a short story club, which is even better than a book club. Mm. Because, because <laughs> you don't have to read a whole book; you can just one right after the other. Little short stories, and then you talk about them, and you get to know the people you're talking to. Sometimes that's not so terrific. Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, you know, the opera group and, and the music things, and there's just anything that goes on in the world. If you look around, there's a class of, for it. Mm -hmm. and, um, right. and it's very rewarding, very rewarding. I, I, my, I have a child who's coming up, uh, for my four daughters live elsewhere, so they come and visit and they talk to their brother every day and know what's going on with mom, what did she get a pavilion? <laughs> and, so, and so, but the thing is, is that it's very, um, it's very rewarding for them to know that I have that to do, and um, and they keep busy. Pardon? Yeah, that you keep busy. Mm -hmm. That I do keep busy. Mm -hmm. well, it's not it's be an interesting busy that you are. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, not it's my choice. Way. Yeah. You're doing what you want to do. Right. But I do. Um, our temple, Temple Emmanuel, has it has a very interesting program, High Village, that offer many yeah. activities. For It's at 80 plus. Yeah, oh, 80 plus is a great group. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what, what, so if someone needs to fill time, there right. something from movie groups, um, book groups, it's so much discussions. Right, it's current and events. you're currently learning and stimulating Always your doing brain. doing something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's important. And I don't know, I'm just, busy all the time. I value my friends. Yes. And of course my family. Mm -hmm. I have a new addition. I have two two great grandchildren now. Oh congratulations. Wow. That's exciting. Congratulations. Yeah. Twins? No, no, no. Oh. One is three and a little and a brother big brother's three almost three. And his sister's three months old. Okay. And where do the great grandchildren live? Are they local? Beach. Oh so it's not too far. That's okay. why you have to drive. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I have to drive so I can keep going to Palm Desert. Mm -hmm. That's I get there. How about you, Donna? In terms of activities, I spent 12 years on the city council in Beverly Hills. Two of those years, I was mayor. Prior to that time, I played around in, polit in local politics, helping in campaigns, including a Prince campaign. When your husband was a very little boy. <laughs> and uh, then I became active at the Board of Governors at Cedars Sinai. And then was on the board of the New Wallace, Wallace Theater, and spent 10 years there. I have just retired 
From that, because as I looked to either side of me, they were the sons of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and it was time for Grandma Moses right. to leave the board and move on to a support group, which they're just starting. Right. And I look forward to that. It's, we will have our first meeting in a month. Great. So that will be my, but I'm still active at the Cedars on the Board of Governors. And I play bridge once a week. And of course, I join my good friend Gail at the uh, Beyond the Headlines programs. And they have UCLA movies that we sign up for just prior to Academy Award time. So we go to the movies. And life is busy. Yeah. And I will say, I don't, I'm not quite as energetic as I was. I do get tired and every now and then it's fun to just stay home. Not often and I find that it's a mistake if I stay home two days. Yeah. Wow, that's it just, interesting. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. One day you get up, sleep late, horse around, clean a right, dresser right. drawer, do some things like that. Just one day and but get back out on the road. That's right. If it's I, really important to keep going. If I stay home two days, I will take myself to a movie, which I, I do. I go to the movies, I go to theaters, I go to the opera, mm -hmm. I go on the mm -hmm. opera group. Yeah, we all stay busy. Mm -hmm. That's both so most I, important. I the same yeah, and yeah, I just left my trainer out three days. So what <laughs> do right, we can't forget about the trainer three days a week. I also did the runs twice a week. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. On the, do you do the Reformer? On the Reformer, on the, on the Cadillac, on Wow. Whatever. A lot of core work. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's also a, a really good way to exercise when you get a little bit older that, that you won't get injured as much. There's not as much, you're not as prone to injury in, right. on, a, on a Pilates but, Reformer. I wish I had started it 10 years earlier. I've been doing it, well, I think I've been doing it five years, but my daughter says, no, I've been doing it seven or eight. And I wish I had started it five years before that, when she told me I should start, and I didn't Thank listen. You right. What is a new experience that you're you're excited to experience? My granddaughter just graduated from medical school. Well, I was looking forward to that since her white coat ceremony four years ago. It was very, very exciting. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I give wonderful she, she parties. Does. There you go. My which one was my Sinatra party? My 90th. 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 My 90th was... Frank was there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking my family to Bulgaria. Oh, wow. Um, actually in six weeks. And I'm taking, unfortunately, all of my family cannot go, but so far 10 of us are going, including just turned one year old great granddaughter. Oh my. Fantastic. Fantastic. A very yeah. exciting trip. That is exciting. Anybody else have any I'm exciting things? New York for Andy's 60th birthday in December. I'm taking her and her and both girls and we're going to New York. Wow, that's fun. That's really wonderful. That's great. I want to go to Donna's 100th birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys all for coming. This has been a truly inspirational discussion that we've had and I have learned a lot from you and I'm sure all of my viewers have as well. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I'm in awe of people like this, people that have been on the planet far longer than I have. And it's not so much the number of years on the planet, but the way that they have lived those years. Because one day too, I will be part of this age group with a little luck. And I will draw on this experience to help me live a full and active life, no matter what my age. And that is a really good way to live young. Thank you for having me. I love doing it. I love being here. Let's do it again. I had a wonderful time. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. I think this was a terrific experience. I've never done anything like this before. Oh, good. It was a privilege to have been interviewed by Darnell. I thought it was great. I enjoyed every minute of it. It was a super experience for me.